John, I think the first one is you know, uh, in three, uh, exactly what is it now? Seriously, it's it's a. Uh... We used to call them ribs, young. Now they called something else, uh, like every other injury. That means the hematoma. No, sorry, I mean, it's intercostal. He's got, he popped a rib against the balls. Um, so to be honest, he's he should be back for La Rochelle, but it's not certain. Yeah, <laughs> so he's limited to one question. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah is it? Uh, I'll keep on going then. Um, I think uh, you, you touched on the question is about the importance of the next three weeks, but uh, tomorrow obviously is, is a start event. I mean, it doesn't help if you three weeks are important and, and you stumble over uh, the tournament. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, um, without well, being too, you know, just seeing La Rochelle and their results and their personnel and both tight heads, both tight heads weigh collectively over 300 kilos and they're, you know, they're, they're doing so well in the yeah, that's a very much a sort of upside game, isn't it? You know, nobody I think really expects us to, but these are absolutely critical. You know, we, you know, like I said to the team this morning, as the long, I know it's very congested between three and probably ten, uh, but Storm has been ninth in the log is not where we want to be in like our standards we've set ourselves over the last couple of years. So, yeah, so whilst La Rochelle will be a great occasion and nice to have and a big shootout and, you know, a massive upside for us if we win it. This is sort of do or die stuff, you know, in terms of us moving up the log. So it's like, yeah, they're pressure games these next two. Last one for me. Uh, what aspects of your game do you think you need to focus on tomorrow to start that process? Um, look, I suppose there's, there's Loftus, sort of co Loftus confirmed some of the stuff that we've known about ourselves for a while. Um, you know, if we don't get. Our mall defense is very um, psychotic, you know. It's either really what's uh, what's I don't know word, but it's either really good or we travel, you know. We get done. We got did at Loftus in, in three malls and about four penalties, you know. Every game we've lost in the URC, including last year's final, mall mall defense being consistent and contestable game. So they're at Loftus, you know. They, 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 they got on top of us in the malls. Uh, they scored those two more tries and they got a couple of other penalties. And the other issue was in the second half, and we've seen, you know, we just we didn't protect Warwick and whoever the receiver was. And then, you know, Kirk and we got a few kicks back. So we're not going to win the URC or be in the sharp end of this tournament unless we fix those two things. So those are the areas we worked on last year. All right, Thomas, for you, No, I was going to laugh because that's no, no, not a difficult question. I'm being naughty because I could give you one of those. Who knows? You know, with Warwick, no, but he's genuinely got a bit of a knee that's flaring up. So the truth with Warwick is he could have played, but then he won't train for the next three or four weeks because that's he's just going to go on top of that injury. So we almost used the bye last week uh, and this week as a chance. Then he can train fully and everything over the next two weeks. So it's a knee. Uh, it's a, I think it's. Do you know what it is? Which one? Not sure. It's 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 car. Uh, it's some sort of cart, the cart, which is just swelling up every time he trains. Sasha's four to six weeks, not months. Uh, expert, huh? So he makes also knee, and I didn't get the diagnosis right. It's a PCL, but he's uh, he's back for it works out. You know, if we make the playoffs, I think he's eligible for. I'll get this right. In fact, uh, that that little tour we do to Dragons and to Connet, but it's a knee injury. He did it, it came on, coming off the bench at Loftus. He did it within the first few minutes. Actually, very the last few weeks. Um, and the only squad in the table in your defense, I mean, if you guys are all right, they need to defend patiently, you know, when somebody jackals. Yeah. And how do you feel that that will affect your deep? Probably a reason why we went a bit more like than like when we usually do when Dion's unavailable or the box or injured is with Nama. So I thought, you know, he's he's taken a long time to get his form back because a nasty back injury he did at that at the end of 2023, 2022. So uh, we want somebody for the athlete reason, Stephen. So him and Evan are the two guys charged with trying to get over the ball. Um, that's why we went like for like. Um, it's Dion's a pity because, you know, he's. he's He's, he's probably in the twilight of his career and uh, you know he needs a couple of games to get going and so now uh, we had the Springbok resting came back injured another six weeks so uh, it's not ideal for us and as uh, someone back that's obviously uh, 
quite a boost on you know being in the starting lineup because I must say he looks very impactful. Yeah, I think we. He was incredible against the Sharks when he came off for a guy who played whatever, I mean, 60 minutes in in close to a year. Um, so, yeah, and we we got him on early at Loftus. Look, he's an outstanding leader. You know, he's the captain, you know, even if Dion comes back, he's, and uh, just his work rate and his physicality. So, it's, it's you know, he's a big figure for us. Um, I just went a little bit on the stage here from looks Team, but he also started his career off very well. Uh, and driving back you know, at this point, yeah. it's a godsend. Look at our scum with lines. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, we lose said it. It's, it's, in, uh, it's incredibly important. Here, we had a scrum session on Tuesday, which is probably the scariest one I've seen. Yeah, so you had Brocky and Neatlung, Lizu and France, or whatever way around they were configured, and Lizu was going. Hard at France and Nyakland in that session, like properly, like it was. Lisa calm down stuff, you know, and um, there was so yeah. He, he's a, he's a very important part for us going if we if we progress very far in these competitions. Just your general thoughts on Edinburgh. Obviously, you picked up very early. Out of the Scotland international, didn't do on which you know what you general Um. Yeah, look, we didn't expect the look. It'd been quite tough guys to play in Dublin. I presume they didn't go straight back to the hotel after the game, and then to uh, fly to Cape Town um, and get ready. Yeah, so they have got the Sharks next week. So we thought that the Scottish Nationals, but you know, there's some really impressive players without that. You know, Vinicius very dangerous at nine. Hamish Watson's a British and Irish line. Um, I was going to quote that there's got you know, somebody that's quite a uh, Bill Marta is one of the best teammates in the world. So I think um, they're a tough team. We haven't gone away this season. Um, they will be slightly affected by Ali Price not being here. I know you're not an international, but his kicking game, that contestable game of his is one of the best around. And uh, you know, obviously a couple of internationals, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a team that fights. Though. So, yeah, it's, a, it's got, a, got a sort of element of we, we really desperate and they're a team who hangs around. So let's see. And I uh, wonder is. Uh, must be quite special um, for me now from this, this start at the DHL stadium. And it is about a hundred percent. I'm very excited. And, um, every time I came to play in Cape Town against the Stormers, it was a massive occasion. Um, they call it the Newton's Faithfuls. I mean, they always stack down the team, and I'm very excited to to, to run out here in front of them. Yeah. And then I'll uh, uh, um, you see, they said there were quite a lot of you know work and training. With you and defense and so on, where you feel you're 100% comfortable in the structure? 100%. I mean, the players, first of all, were very welcoming. Norman, Darby, Coach Stover, yeah, they were very, very hard on me in, in getting my paces up to standard, getting my structures in place. And I feel very confident that I understand the system now, and it's just up to me to go out there and play and enjoy my NBA. Yeah. Dan's a senior player in the team. Dan is very calm to say the least, which helps us. I mean, a lot of a lot of guys in the team are very exciting, including myself. Trump possibly may get ahead of ourselves a little bit, but he's very calm, very level headed, and helps me to say the least to say the least to stay calm and focused. Now you feel level about the team's um approach to the game, the philosophy and um the transition game. Everyone knows how exciting the Stormers want to play or the Stormers play. And for me, it's just, I think the sooner I find, I find my feet and find where I'll be most influential, influential in this whole entire mess in an attack, um, the better it'll be for the team. So it's just about me to calm down, uh, work hard, figure out where I fit in this whole lovely puzzle and yeah, believe we'll, we'll have quite a good season. So we're just in the news this week, um, what does that mean for you and, and playing you from years of this company? Obviously it was going to happen, but it's a bit of relief that it's going to okay. translate into something different on the field in terms of this relief that comes with the news. Yeah, uh, um, yeah you Lloyd, I think you're right that, that I think they've been kept well up to speed, so it wasn't like a massive moment of euphoria. 
but I think there's a massive sense of uh, you know of comfort now, of security, and that and you know guys are worrying about other things. Is it, it takes away from performance? I think they've had a bit of security for a long time now. They know it's going to happen, but to see it finally happen this week, um, you know, and we just seen some stuff. Like we showed the team this morning, some of our marketing stuff and. Uh, some of the plans are on the commercialization of Western Province rugby, and that's that gives a team. Yeah, you know, for a while, for a long time, we were survivors, you know, and now we feel like we're in the era we're about to thrive, you know. And it may not be what's well, not going to be like a you know, dramatic changes to the rugby program, but just the whole program and commercial growth, and you know, the business business it does as a business, the more we invest in players and. But I, I think where the, the 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 key piece actually you know, was the was not so much the playing staff, but certainly the staff. You know, those ladies in the laundry and the people uh, around the whole HPC. But finally, they don't have to worry about you know is there going to be another retrenchment process? Is there going to be another liquidation? Because they live in the they you know they don't live in the sort of same sort of world of security and lights and remuneration as the as the players. So that was interesting. With, uh, with that good news coming this week, though, uh, you started on uh, wishes, maybe. Anyone else? Looking for a 13? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> proper one. <word. laughs> that one from Morocco Swallows. <laughs> He's, he played for Swallows. That's right. but, um, no, 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 high hand on heart, no form of wish list. Our wish list really was to keep this group together. And, uh, and that's what... It's often easier said than done. So that's probably, you know, you know if you get a, a, a guy like, uh, there's been a lot of speculation the last few weeks about Achiever. So, you know, that keeping that together is not just a question of us carrying on as usual. It's, uh, that might require before investment if we have to receive some offer from Japan or, or, or where it is. So keeping it together, you know, we, and you guys know all the studies around cohesion. This team will get better the more we stay together. Um, so there's no plans the moment of anything of, of anything i think what i like about the red dyes is they say what the most important thing is that western province rugby is sustainable and to be sustainable means we're going to have to sort of live within our means a little bit but that's fine i think this team's good enough no matter who's signed been signed in in, in in durban or who's been signed in pretoria this team's still good enough to compete so, so can we get some extra waters <laughs> yeah i'm so disappointed that that's mike de Vries and, uh, Sorry, but then, then, uh, we're having another look at his role as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> cool guys uh, on Zoom. It's Nathan with his two questions. Where's Nathan? Um, thank you very much. Firstly, Dob, I want to say congratulations with the consortium um, deal finally going through. I know you had a lot in, to play in it. Um, excitement uh, this weekend: the, Buff the Buffalo Francis backs in line and leads the first official game at, at the new home. Does, I just want to ask, does France uh, have a limit in, time, in terms of his playing time for this weekend? I think the SPCA have already told us that he's uh, uh, a limit. No, yeah, he does. Uh, I, I think if we get him to half time, we've done well. Um, so, yeah, you know, that's the reason, Nathan, we didn't start. We didn't, because he was quite curious. Nietzsche has been one of our best players this season, and suddenly he's on the bench. And that's only because you couldn't go the other way around, that if uh, Nietzsche started, and uh, he went down in five minutes. That you have to go and ask France to do seventy-five. You know, um, whereas you know France goes down in five minutes with an injury. Touch wood. Then Nettling, we know, he's done eighty minutes in Durban. Can do it again here. So France probably try and get him towards half. And then, in, then in terms of the preparation for this weekend, um, taking into consideration the Edinburgh side coming in, did you take into, into consideration the Six Nation players that might feature this weekend? The last of Dewey. Pierre and the boys. The, the duo, just, duo, yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, we sort of worked out that they that probably rest a few of their internationals. Uh, so, but, yeah, but we, I know it's going to sound like a terrible cliche, but what happened at Loftus, and I, I don't know if you were on the call earlier, Nathan, you know, with more defence and contestables, those are areas of our game where we, every game we've lost in URC, either both or one of those have, have malfunctioned. And that was the case in Pretoria. So we know Edinburgh, you know, they've got a contestable big kicking game. We know that they've got a good maul. So it's more about us trying to get those areas right because I'm absolutely convinced if we don't fix those, we're not going to be at the very, very sharp end of this tournament. So we're too stressed about what Edinburgh were bringing rather than getting those two things right, even though it happens to suit how Edinburgh are going to play. Uh, 
Um, one day on to you, last time I spoke to you was after the UCT friendly and you were really hesitant to speak to the media, but now obviously Mike puts you on the high table. What was the message from your coaches ahead of this game? Message from the coaches, I mean, <clears throat> we clearly know how important this game is for us. Uh, we want to have a very good good home stretch now the next couple of weeks for us to get back on top of the URC and also to be well prepared for the La Rochelle big showdown. So, I mean, the message is, we you know, we definitely know that the game is important for us. And for me personally, it's just to to have fun. And I'm just going out there, no pressure on myself and just going out to to enjoy myself, put in a very good performance for the team and hopefully we get a win, yeah.